I love you, pumpkin. I love you, honey bunny. Everybody be cool, this is a robbery! Any of you fucking pricks move! I'm gonna electrocute every motherfucking last one of you! Volume11music.com, Big Mex and Jamie Show. I'm Big Mex. I'm Jamie. And uh, what'd you think of that? I thought it was pretty cool. It brought yeah. me back. Yeah? How, yep. uh, dude, I've been watching, uh, I was on a, I got on a little Tarantino uh, kick last night and uh, watching The Hateful Eight and uh, have you seen that one yet? I have not. Oh my God, that's such a good movie. The Hateful Eight and um, uh, Django Unchained and, uh, and Pulp Fiction. Oh, okay. So I was like, you know what? I think I'm going to start the show off with that right there. Yeah. I mean, I remember seeing Pulp Fiction in a little art house. Oh, really? In, Se- in downtown Seattle when oh. that came out. And it was such a trip because, you know, nobody really did movies like that. Nuh-uh. So you had that scene, that was the, one of the which is the beginning, you know. and then the movie just goes f- a full circle around. I, I and think it was the, just such a trip. I think the only other movie that was like that prior to that was uh, Memento. I, I, Memento came later. Really? Yeah. Huh. Yep. I remember that. Well, yep. we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Yeah. We'll argue about that later, Mr. Know-It-All. Excellent. Anyway, so what's going on? Oh, you know, it's been uh, about a week since we last did this. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I was actually thinking about it when I was uh, compiling things that we might uh, bring up. You know, we put little notes down, just kind of remind us what we might bring up. Yeah. The rock world was not all that interesting it this was, week. It was quiet for once. It really was. I mean, there was no significant deaths uh, <laughs> other than Nancy Reagan this morning. She and, died? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. And then Commandant Lassard passed away after. Well, if you read my description. I read the description. In the last podcast. This is a nice little uh, secret. At the end of my description of the last podcast, if you see at the very end, it goes, and much, 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 much I, more. Yeah. And then I put rest in peace yeah, yeah. to George Gaines slash Commandant Lassard. Yeah. So hopefully people got that. Yeah, no. I didn't. I was like, why did he put much, much? I didn't like. <laughs> Whatever. You remember, he used to repeat everything like over and over and over and over again. In the Police Academy movies, yep. I, you know what? I didn't get into the Police Academy series. Really, really. So I'm gonna have to go back and I, and I remember. I think I was too young, or my parents thought I was too young to be seeing an R-rated movie at that uh-huh. time. So I didn't. I don't remember seeing well, it. Well, they were all the same. <laughs> yeah. Well, so you were like, you know, 35 when the last one came out. <laughs> They still had him that late? That no, I'm joking. Oh, but uh, he always had the same scene, which was he was at the podium, and somehow or another, a person was underneath the podium who just happened to give him a blowjob. Uh, and then when he was doing that, he'd be like... Doesn't that happen to everybody, though? Oh, yeah. It's okay. happening right now to me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. and then you had to look. Yeah, well, Thanks a lot. Whatever. Damn it. So, uh, so, yes, Commandant Lassard, uh, the guy who George Gaines passed away last week, that was crazy. I didn't even realize he was alive, to be honest with you. Sorry. <laughs> wow. So I remember. From, I remember from Punky Brewster. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. that's what I yeah. remember him from. But yeah. anyway, so uh, so the rock world was was quiet except for music wise. We got a lot of really cool music playing that we're going to be playing this week. Oh, music for us! Like yeah, actual music for bands us. that yeah the bands that we're going to be featuring. Yeah. Um, should we just say who we're featuring to start the show out to uh, say? Yeah, sure. We're going to be playing uh, one of the bands that's. Um, and real quick before I go into this band. If we decide, to, or if I decide to ever put out the uh, the radio contraband episode out, <laughs> uh-huh. it's one of those lost episodes. I was just like, you know what? Let's just keep moving. But anyway, this is one of those bands that we tried to play, but they hadn't released a single yet, and uh, which is Hounds of Jezebel. Yes. And uh, I'm really excited about the song, uh, about the band. I know you liked them as well. Oh yeah, definitely. We we hit it off with the band, which yeah. was even better. Thank yeah. God. Yeah. Uh, you know, and they're they're fantastic. They have an EP coming out on April first. Okay. And that's called the EP is called the Shakedown. Uh huh. And the song we're gonna play a little bit later is called Ooh, the Shakedown. Interesting. And also another band that we're playing today, Sunflower Dead. Yes. Uh, we were supposed to play on the on that episode that I decided to shelve. True Debt. So we're gonna be playing them tonight also. And another band from L.A. called Vampires Everywhere. Yes, Vampires what? Everywhere. They've been around for a while. Yeah. They uh, kind of went dark for a bit and changed their name to The Killing Lights. Okay. And then now Vampires Everywhere is back. And that's a band fronted by Michael Vampire. Yes. And uh, when I interviewed Michael, 
I, the, the first when I heard the band when I was first brought the opportunity in, I was like, yeah, sure, you know. I the first thing I said, oh, vampires everywhere, you know, Lost Boys. Lost Boys. And I brought it up to him. He was like, you know, you're the first person that has ever interviewed me to bring that up. And I'm like, are you kidding me? Seriously? He's like, I was like, are you serious? He's like, yeah, absolutely. Wow. And I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> I think it's because you know they originally got a lot of press out of the younger demographic, uh-huh. and I don't think those. You know, they, other than the know, I, I iconic yeah. Lost Boy stuff, they didn't know enough of the movie to know that that was the the comic that Corey Haim was reading. Yeah, in the comic but book you should, shop. You, I mean, it's such a pop culture for pop us. Cultural, no, for anybody though. Yeah. I mean, even my kids know. Yeah, but your kids are above, you know, the average. I don't know. I think it's, I think it's one of those things where I think a lot of people should know. Yeah, yeah. It should that's be taught in me. school. Should be taught in school. Exactly. So we're gonna be playing them tonight. Uh, so let's. Uh, what, what do you got about? Uh, so the rock, the rock world is slow. So that means we're going to focus on TV and movies. Today. I think so. I, I will mention a couple things about the rock world and okay. the music world in general. Um, the whole world, the planet, okay. the universe oh, was right. punked this week oh. by uh, probably the. You know, say what you will about their music. I love their music, and I always will. Yeah. But some people are like, oh, I don't like it. It's not Nirvana. It's not this. And that. You know what? Foo Fighters is probably the coolest band around. And fronted by the coolest guy, which is Dave Grohl. Man Crush right there. Yes. I'll, I'll be honest with you, oh, Man yeah. Crush. Yeah. And they punked the whole world by letting everybody and their mother, including major media and news outlets, think that they were going to break up. Yeah. They even planted those seeds months, or I think like weeks ago, on a red carpet appearance that was two seconds long by Taylor Hawkins, who just happened to mention something that there was issues or something in the band. They made this elaborate video. With special guest appearances by right. Nick Lachey. Yes, as the new vocalist, possibly, of <laughs> oh my God, Foo that Fighters. Was so funny. And then Dave Grohl going totally like prog yeah. in, you know, in his solo career and, and everything. And Butch Vig. Butch Vig just totally like pushing him. like him on, like, yeah. you know, like co-signer. And everything. Yeah, Dave, yeah, yeah. It was fantastic. So I urge it. I will put a link on there to their uh, monumental <laughs> video. Please do. That uh, you got to check it out. If you have not checked it out or if you just saw reports to say, you know, I think a lot of people out there, I guarantee you half the people think they are on hiatus yeah. because all they did was read the headlines and never saw the actual uh, yeah. you know, video. So you got to check this out. <laughs> it was hilarious. And I got to say, uh, shout out to Lachey. He sang uh, Everlong pretty good. Yeah, yeah, but in a very uh, 98 Degrees way. And yeah. I, yes, I know he was part of 98 Degrees. I have no shame in that. Oh, that's funny. Now, yeah. Now, we won't go back to... <laughs> that. I think that was actually from the last episode when you made fun of me for knowing who O-Town was. Was it? Yeah, no, I believe no, no, so. no, because uh, it was the one right before Anna. No, So, no, people heard that one. Oh, okay. So, yeah. yeah, so Mex knows 98 Degrees pretty well, but if I know O-Town, I'm in big trouble. <laughs> I see how it is. Well, because Nick Lachey is also one of those guys. Well, he banged Jessica Simpson, first of all. I that mean, is true. you got to give the guy props for that that, and, one, that alone. And the other guy. And, and uh, Van, uh, not, oh, not, I want to say Christina Milian, but it's not That's Christina Milian. It's Vanessa something. Yeah, something or other. He's married to her. They got yeah. like two or three kids or something like yeah. that. Yeah. yeah, he's done pretty well for himself. Yeah, not too bad for a guy who, uh, <laughs> who's in a kind of a lame group. But yeah. Yeah, so, um, so yeah, congratulations to the Foo Fighters. Thank you for all that. And you know what's great is is like a lot of uh, a lot of outlets, uh, websites and, you know, stuff like that, they played into it. Oh, yeah. And they're like, oh, my God, it's official. So what do we do? It's official. Oh Hashtag yeah, Foo Fighters. that was our post. That it's was official. Our post. It's and, officially and that we got punked. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I thought it was great. Yeah. So good for them. Um, Deftones follow up. We mentioned last week something about uh, Stephen Carpenter yeah. really not liking the uh, product on their new album Gore, uh-huh. and I uh, wasn't happy playing on it. Chino uh, responded to that. Really didn't give us much information other than yeah, he was kind of the odd man out, but he got into it towards the end, which that was uh, kind of in that guitar interview anyways that he got into yeah. it at the end but uh, I think it's kind of a, a no news type situation it was you think just, it's dead I think it's good hype yeah, for an nice. album like oh we gotta check this out Yeah, it's gonna be different you know this it, and that I, I felt for, you know and I thought about that too but listening to Stephen Carpenter because Deftones is, is one of those bands now where they're at the they're at the rock star they're rock stars yeah. you know like Slash is a rock star Deftones are rock stars yep um 
So they're at that point to where it's like, you know, you kind of fall, you know, you, you want to know, like, oh, my God, are they going to go away? I was one of those guys. But now that the hype is, you know, built up, it's like, I, now I want to see why he wasn't. Yeah, I think it's just simple that there wasn't as much heavy guitar. He's the metal guy in the band. Yeah. I mean, that's just the truth. Chino's the guy listening to the Duran Duran and New Order, you know. He's, he's yeah, that he was guy. a new wave guy. But yeah. he was also the punk guy, too. I mean, he listened yeah. to a lot of punk as yeah. well. But he was, you're right, he was more into the... Into the new wave, but that's what made that band, and still does make that band stand out above pretty much any other band in that genre. Yeah, they bring those two things together, and it's just pretty amazing. What that they first can do album, with it. that fucking first Deftones album was, oh my god, dude. Well, the second one too. The second well, one was I, great. Pretty much all of them. Yeah. I mean, with with the except maybe Saturday Night Wrist wasn't that great, but yeah, uh, you know, maybe Self Titled wasn't as great, but you know, they knew that even. So yeah, that's all right. Uh, and then last but not least, this week, uh, we finally got dates and uh, tickets on sale for Slipknot's latest tour. Yeah. The never-ending uh, Chapter 5 tour. I mean, this has been... The gay chapter. The gay chapter. <laughs> you remember and that? Yes, I do. That was from <laughs> Radio Contraband. Uh, but, uh, yeah, this tour is unbelievable. I mean, they have toured... I mean, how many times? They've been to Vegas like two, three times. It's been crazy on this same mm, tour cycle. Just for this tour? Just yeah. once. Just once? Yeah, just the, outs- the outdoor. I swear it's been more than that. So, uh. huh. Oh, well. Yeah. I'll have to think about it. But well, I saw him twice, at, you saw three him? times at Knotfest on this tour cycle, because they played two nights and then one night last year. Okay. And then once in Vegas, so it's already been four times on this tour cycle. Yeah. I've seen them. You know what? I'm not excited about really? it. Really? I'm not into it. I Slipknot, mean, not Manson, and Of Mice and Men. All no. at the MGM Grand Garden no, Arena. Not into it. During the summer, too. And you would think, hey, let's go inside and see Slipknot. It's, it's inside. Yeah, that's, that's what oh, I said. Okay. It's inside, too. But you're still not into it even because of that? No. Yeah, I'm not into I it. feel bad for you. I mean, I... Maybe it's because I, I've seen these bands in small venues. That's you know true. what I mean? Once you see these bands, especially in the beginning at smaller venues, I think the largest at, up until the, up until last summer's uh, last stand tour, the largest venue I'd seen them at was the Pearl. No, I didn't go to that one. I went to Zombie the night before oh, that's that. Right. Uh, was at the House of Blues. Huh? Oh no, no, at Thomas and Mac it was the largest venue I'd seen them at. That's a pretty big venue. Yeah. The floor wasn't ah. filled. You know what I mean? Yeah. They weren't. They weren't who they are now. Yeah. You know. I got gotcha. you. Um, so, you know, I'm not. That's nah, a hell of a show. So if you yeah, no, it's going to be a great if show. If you jump Don't on Groupon, you get thirty dollars nosebleed seats. Now, if I can get thirty dollars seats, yeah, they're you know, on. They are actually on Groupon right now. Oh, are they for really? Thirty bucks. Nice. Yeah. Um, what are seat? What are floor uh, uh, tickets going for? About eighty-five dollars each. Really? By the end of the day. Fuck, yeah. Man. Fuck that, dude. Yeah. Well. Yeah, it depends. It's a good time. Yeah. I mean, I'd pay it. Oh wait, yeah. I did. Oh yeah, yeah, I did. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so do you want to? Why don't we play a song? Sure, let's we'll play a song. Out. You you pick the song. Okay, I'm gonna spin the wheel of songs, and I've landed you on. Like our, you like our nasty little sound effect? I know. Uh, Hounds of Jezebel. All right, cool. we just talked about them. This is the Shakedown. They're from Houston. Yay, Yay Houston. And uh, EP comes out on April 1st, so check them out. Big Mex and Jamie Show, volume11music.com. We know that you're out there with those pretty lips, just a memory. Silence is the lighthouse, it's shining on and disbelief. Finding just a way out is man enough for me to be. We know that you're out there, I'm going to simplify. Timing is the way out, and it's 
Hype11music.com, Big Max and Jamie Show. That was the shakedown from our friends Hounds and Jezebel. Love it. Yeah, and it was funny because on the way here recording, I got the message from John Curry, the singer. You got the message also. It's I like, did. hey, we're releasing the shakedown. You guys can play it. You guys are giving us, you know, we're giving you permission to play. I'm like, fucking awesome. We were looking into playing a third song. Yeah, anyway. it was good timing. So it was, it was really perfect timing. timing. So Jank, thank you, John, for that and everybody else in the band uh, for letting us play the song, The Shakedown. So, um, we got done with the music part because yeah. it was very there wasn't slow. a lot. There yeah, it wasn't a lot. lot. Um, and real quick, we're, we're at the Sporting Life Bar, 7770 oh, yes. South Jones Boulevard. Uh, it's They have all sorts of specials here, and they got darts. They got the real dart boards, like the bristle dart boards, mm-hmm. steel tip darts. Um, they, got, they got all kinds of uh, – they got great food here. They got drink specials. They got – Pretty cute waitresses. Yeah, I heard they have deviled eggs too. Yeah, the deviled. I heard somebody talking about yeah. deviled eggs, so I just got to let everybody know out there that they have deviled eggs. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's crazy for a bar to have deviled eggs, isn't it? Really, that I is mean, a, little, it's a little. But it's like it's more of like the gourmet type food. You yeah, know? it's not cheap bar food. Put yeah, it no, that but way. it's not expensive either. So. No, but cheap in the sense that it's not you know thrown together. Yeah, microwave nuked, nuked <laughs> yeah. out of the freezer. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so what else you got as far as uh, movies and TV? Yeah, we, you know, I have a lot of stuff when it comes to that. I, one thing that you know uh, my radar is always on is uh, Star Wars. Okay. And yeah. uh, you know, I like mentioning. Oh, shut up! I like mentioning uh, the upcoming Star Wars flicks, and yep. one of those is Rogue One, which. Believe it or not, we really don't know a damn thing about right now, yeah. which, again, is following the pattern of the last movie. You didn't know a damn thing. Um, I guess they showed a little bit of footage to the shareholders for the Disney deal, yeah, and some of it leaked out. Not actual footage, but the description seems pretty interesting. There's going to be some uh, some differences that happen between A New Hope and Episode 3 okay. that we never saw, like different types of stormtroopers. Which are going to be uh, possibly black armored stormtroopers and also uh, chrome kind of cool. chrome armored stormtroopers, yeah. which may kind of I think they're going to do stuff that kind of maybe can tie in with the newer movies as well. Yeah. So maybe you'll see why Captain Phasma has this armor or something like that. And they showed some scenes, uh, just quick scenes between some of the main characters. They showed some large uh, Imperial walkers. I thought you were going to say large breasts. I'm like, really? Well, there are some breasts in the movie. <laughs> Underneath armor and things like that, but uh, no, it seemed pretty interesting. They said it had a real gritty look to it, so it's following yeah. what we thought, which is it's going to be kind of a Black Hawk down for Star Wars. And Black I said Hawk Black down. Hawk down, just in case you're wondering. Black Hawk down, yeah, yeah whatever. You know, it's on your mind. Uh, <laughs> so uh, well, that sounds interesting, actually. Um, and the release date is like December, right? Yeah, December. Huh, yeah, I think we're going to see a trailer for it with Civil War. With Captain America: Civil War, that's the that rumor. would make sense. That'll be the first teaser, probably probably not a trailer, but a teaser. Also, in Star Wars uh, news, there is a lot of little uh, to dos with the title of Episode Eight, and I think it's all bullshit. Really, yeah. uh, there's all these weird little titles. I don't know what they are. I didn't really go into it, but there's a few different titles floating around. That was the one that you told me a couple, last week or a couple of weeks ago. Something about a bear. Oh well, they're shooting under. A, like a secret name like they did with uh, yeah. Return of the Jedi like Blue Harvest or whatever this one is something bare as far as their secret name for it but yeah. the actual title of the movie actually it was Anna that told me that the day yeah. that you were sick yeah yeah, yeah. but uh, the title the, so far the ones that have come out are kind of lame and it's like Secret of the Jedi Temple or or that's not know. lame that's no, kind of cool guess what it wasn't secret it was like Story of the Jedi it was something that didn't sound right you know oh. secret. actually Secret of the Jedi Temple sounds better that's me I just made that up but so it was something go, so Jedi they go Temple. Copyright? Is that copyright from you? No. Um, I don't know. Well, thank no. you for holding up the C for copyright. So yeah. I didn't, you know, yeah. follow along. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so we'll see what happens on that. Um, what else we got? We got uh, Ghost. Oh, Ghost. real quick, real quick. Oh, are we done with Star Wars? Because I don't want to come back to Star Wars again. I'm, I'm done really... with Star Wars for now. Okay. Okay. Good. This is coming from the guy who was like, "Hey, maybe we should do a Star Wars podcast." Uh, excuse me. That was <laughs> your idea, and you made sure to. T- and I- I'm gonna play. The, I'm gonna play it right now. I'm gonna play it right now. <laughs> yeah. But you know, we've been talking about. Actually, I, I think I've been talking about this episode for about a year now. See, I was right. Uh, you're the one. You're the one that you said that it was your idea in the last in one of our episodes. So I just played it right now. <laughs> if you say so, I'm telling you. I know you. You want me to agree with what we just heard here, uh, but no. I think you may have spliced that. No. And I think you're you're listening the way you want to hear it. <laughs> Okay. We'll see. If only Anna was here. Anna would be the voice of reason. 
she would know. Yeah, whatever, yeah. dude. <laughs> we'll go back to it, but we won't go back to Star Wars All on right, this episode. Yeah, no more Star Wars. So anyway, go ahead. So what I was going to talk about is the new uh, Ghostbusters trailer. <sighs> wake up. Wake up. Yeah. <laughs> is it needed? No, I don't think so. I, only if it was done right. It's well, it's not an update. It's not a. It's like a remake of Ghostbusters with same thing. women. And uh, do I have any th- problem with them having Ghostbuster women? No, but oh, why not yeah, make a modern? I'm a, I'm a sexist. I, women should not be even in movies unless they're naked. Oh my god! <laughs> but uh, no, I mean, at least make this thing different. You, you, know, know? you know? Yeah, I totally agree. I mean, it looked just like Ghostbusters one and two. Even some of the scenes look the same. They have the 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 character types. There's big to do now that the uh, the African American woman in there is being racist why because you being she PC? plays. Why are you being PC? Why are you being PC? Why is it African American? Because she might not be black. She can still be African American. Eh? Yeah. Well, whatever. She's black. Um, anyways, like she plays it way too close to the stereotype. But I think that's her. I think if I'm, not, I, I'm isn't that the chick that's her SNL? I think a couple of them are actually. Yeah, well, yeah. I know Kristen Wiig is. I think the other one I don't recognize too. There's another one in there, blonde lady. I yeah, think. I don't know who um, that is. Something Jones, but if I'm not mistaken, that's the same character she plays. Like, there's not, it's not a stretch for her. It's like you know angry. I mean? Yeah, I think she's. I think she's a know? chick from uh, Empire. I think so. I'm not uh, sure. Could be. I, yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't know. But it's just you know, I don't know. I mean, it's just like it's a remake. It's not a. I mean, it's like okay, she plays the Ernie Hudson character. You know, the, the outsider who's not a scientist. Yeah. You know, it's just like, eh, I don't know. I mean, you see, like, Slimers in it. You see the same ghost. And yeah, I'm not into it. I, I don't know. I don't know what the deal is. I don't, I don't know why know. they did it. So. I don't know. I know. I, know, uh, I don't know if it was, uh, I think it was uh, one of our mutual friends, and I can't remember who it was. It was just like, that trailer lost me in the opening text 30 years ago. <laughs> I'm like what? I was like, and then I kind of like read the whole post. Like it was a rant, yeah. and uh, and I was like, you know what? That's that's pretty much when I lost interest too. It's yeah. it's just not needed, you know. Yeah. Sure, there's a lot of movies out there that probably aren't needed that I liked, but in this yeah. case, does, does, does people really ask for another yeah. Ghostbusters? I don't think so. Uh, you know, speaking of ghosts and things like that, I went and saw The Witch Ooh. this week. Yeah. You know, I've been talking about it for a long time. If you remember, I posted yeah, the trailer, that. and it looks scarier than hell. Yeah. And everyone's talking how scary this movie is. You even said, you got to go see this. you well, got to go see this. it's one of those movies where I can say, like, a lot of people aren't going to like it. Why my is wife, that? My wife hated it. Okay. Uh, why? why because, because it's not a horror movie. Because our, our we had another mutual friend that commented on yeah, it, and, and, he, and he said it. he loved it. Yeah. So, but... I didn't dislike it. Yeah, it was it was somewhat of a letdown, which I knew going in that a lot of people were saying they wanted a certain type of movie, and it's not. It's more of a, and they call it a New England fairy tale or something like that. And it's kind actually, of like Crimson Peak, to an extent, I guess, where it's a, a movie with ghosts, but it's not a ghost story. This one in particular, there are some terrifying parts in this movie, but it's not jump scare movie. It's just like creepy. Uh-huh. Yeah, but it's. Such a realistic take on the times. It was 1640 that this movie takes place in. Okay. It's very hard to follow what people are saying because they are speaking the language at that time. Like the oh, way so that it was too real. Too too authentic. I don't want to say too authentic. I would just admit it was very authentic, which turns off a lot of people. Yeah. Very quiet. There wasn't a lot of noise. You had to be very quiet in the theater to hear things and but it was creepy, and it made you think after the, afterwards, like, for sure. Think in what aspect? Please like, let me know. And, and, and if you got to give spoilers, give spoilers because okay, spoiler. I'm going to spoil the whole thing right now. Spoiler alert right now. So essentially, it's a family that uh, is either ostracized or leaves the Puritan lifestyle okay. village, and goes out on their own in New England, and they live near these woods. It's a weird family, ultra religious. They have uh, two twin kids, a boy and a girl, so they have four kids. The girl is like 15 or something. She's just about to become a woman, that type of thing. Um, no, but that's that's significant, then, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, because supposedly that's yeah. when you turn into a witch or whatever. And there is something in the woods. The little baby is stolen in the beginning of the movie somehow. We don't know why, what, but we see a scene which we assume is real, and it's a witch killing the baby. Okay. So the witch kills the baby. Throughout the movie, all these weird things happen. There's a goat in the movie called Black Philip. Really creepy goat. And it seems to be is communicating. It a black goat? Yeah. Communicating with these two kids, two twins. Okay. Turns out at the end, skip everything. It's really weird. All this weird shit happens. One kid gets possessed and dies, and all this. The goat is Satan. Okay. 
the goat turns into Lucifer. That's kind of cool. It is. I would. I at would the see, end. See, but by the way you were explaining it, I would say I would want to go see this. My description, but it's done in a way where it's not a horror movie or necessarily scary. It's very weird, but it seems to be literal that the goat is Satan, okay. and then at the end, basically, she is a witch. Okay. You know, so it's it's go into it, and you can interpret it. What I just told you is my interpretation. You might say, no, that's not what happened. So it's it's interesting. It's a good one for a home okay. view, I think. So All right, that's or my for, uh, two or for cents. download. Oh, yeah, when it comes out, yeah, yeah. officially. I saw I saw it. Uh, I saw the uh, gods in, uh, gods of Egypt. You saw it. You were the one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it wasn't it wasn't bad. It was, it's the biggest bomb in like years. Bomb uh, bigger than uh, John Carter. <laughs> same same type of uh, caliber. Bigger than uh, what was the one we talked about last week that won a Razzie? Uh, not Fantastic Four, uh, uh, Jupiter Sending. Uh, I would say it's in the same level as that. Really? Yeah, it bombed. It bad. was cool, man. The, well, the kids loved it's it. It's like a Stargate type, you know. Yeah, and, and I hate Stargate. Yeah, I hate Stargate because my wife's mom is into Stargate, and I think that's just. I never, yeah, I never got into it. But yeah, I have no desire to see it necessarily. But I'm sure if when I see it, I'll be like, oh, that was good. Yeah, there's certain styles of movies I just sick of, and that's one of them. But, yeah, uh, not too bad. Uh, yeah, uh, you know what was cool is. Movie previews. Sometimes they suck. Sometimes they don't. Yeah. The movie previews we saw before The Witch, one of the movies we saw was a movie called The Green Room. Okay. Is it- check it out. So I'm gonna put. I'm gonna post a link to the to the trailer that just came out on okay. this. Um, it's a. Uh, I think people who are into music and rock are gonna enjoy it because it's based on a band. Yeah. That gets pretty much trapped in a room with all these different killers and all these. Really, really, really twisted events happening. Yeah, it looks like a trip. It looks so good, and everybody in the theater was—you could hear them after the trailer, like, "Oh, we gotta see that. We gotta see that." And I mean, I think seriously, this is that type of Saw movie, like the Saw One. Uh-huh. Everyone's like, "What is this movie?" And they see it, and they're like, tripped out, like, "Oh my god, yeah, that was so cool." I think this is that type of movie. Yeah. And I was telling you earlier before we started this that uh-huh. there was a movie a couple years ago called Blue Ruin. Okay. And that's kind of an underground movie, but check it out. Blue Ruin. This is the first movie from the same director at, look at that, of yeah. this new one, The Green Room. It's a really good movie. So, so would this be a, along the lines of like maybe a certain type of trilogy that this guy is? No. Who's the director? I can't remember his name. It's somebody you wouldn't know. I mean, you uh-huh. wouldn't know his name. It's like Jeremy something or something like that, but uh, just a distinct style that this guy has. Okay. Real, uh, I hate the word nuance but it is it's like this you know not over the top performances yeah you know blue rune was about a guy who gets revenge and he's like a normal guy so he fucks up a lot and it's not funny but it's like it's really kind of a trip to see what somebody really would do yeah if they wanted revenge on some other people oh it was it's it's cool it's very cool uh, so you'll post a link in that in the description. Yeah, below. yeah, I definitely want to do that. Uh, have a link on there so you can check out the trailer because I think it just dropped. Yeah. So I well, think I'll tell you. Actually, I'm going to look at the preview here in a little bit. Let's go ahead and play another song. Yeah. I think we should. Yeah, we'll play uh, "Sunflower Dead." All right. Um, it's time to get weird. Yeah, I think it's time to get it weird. It's time. To, it's featuring Jonathan Davis. Yes. Uh, what, who's what band is he in? Uh, I can't remember the name of the band. Uh, the, Green beans, green beans, green beans. Yes. Green beans yeah. Yeah. So figure it out yourself. Look it up <laughs> on the Devil. internets. So yeah, this is a song called uh, "It's Time to Get Weird" right here on Volume Eleven Music.com. Big Mex and Jamie Show. When those dead birds chirp aloud like we're not listening To their songs of what's done Just let them mock us, they will see It's time to get Let go! Oh, oh, oh. 
those dead birds who would scorn us without listening Change their tune to our song Now they Music.com, Big Max and Jamie show. That was Sunflower Dead. I always enjoy listening to that song. I like that album a lot. Do you really? Yeah. I, you know what? I do like the album. I've been listening to it quite a bit. Yeah. I was finding out some information about those guys, uh-huh. and uh, I didn't realize there's they're, they're made up of a lot of different band members from other bands. And if you listen to the interview that I had with Mike, uh, with Michael, excuse me, um, he said that he handpicked yeah. all these people. Yeah, so I mean, you got guys from, uh, I mean, again, we may not have heard of a band, but somebody listening is like, oh man, I love that band. Yeah. Uh, Droid, uh, In This Moment, there was a touring member from In This Moment. Yeah. Uh, Memento and Two Hit Creeper, which is a band I've heard of, but I, I can't tell you what they sound like. And then, of course, one of the members is also a part, or was a part of the short-lived Fieldy's <laughs> Dream uh Album tour, or whatever that might be, a uh, Fieldy from Corn. So, just little tidbits of info. I uh, was it Fieldy's Dream that opened for Corn? No, that's still well. That's still well, and they still suck. <laughs> <laughs> they, that was horrible. Band. I was not impressed by that band. <laughs> no. What 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 concert was that? I knew you were gonna ask me. That. It, it was Corn. Corn disturbed. It was probably like a outbreak concert or a, it was a rock Jägermeister. And Jägermeister. And it was also Buck Cherry was on that on that bill and I think hell yeah no not No, hell it was yeah. uh, Papa Roach. Papa Roach. Yeah, I think that I think yeah. that was the tour. We yeah. might be mixing up too, but yeah, you know how they are. They're all kind of the same bands that do those yeah. tours. Yeah. Um, you know, speaking of, you know, going a little bit back to music, the Rob Zombie with Corn tour that's going to be a good tour. Is still coming to Vegas. Yeah. And we don't have a date yet. No, they, they've released like the first half. They Yeah, they released the, the venues yeah. or the, the, the cities, but they haven't released the actual... Venues and dates. Yeah, so it'll be interesting to see when that happens and where that happens. I'm kind of hoping it's not also at the MGM. I, I, would hope it, I would hope a show like that is at the Pearl. Yeah, or the Joint. Or I mean, Brook, a Bl- Brooklyn Bowl. Yeah, I mean, I'm not a fan of the joint, man. See, out of all of them, why. that's that's the one I and, like and, best. And I and I can understand how people like it. I'm not a fan of it because it's 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 just I don't like the setup. Like I don't like really? the flow of it. Yeah, the Pearl. I, I like the flow of it. Like even sitting in nosebleed, we still have great view of the stage. If you sit nosebleed at the joint. You got you got to deal with the rafters in your way. I've never actually sat. I've up actually the joint. sat up there before. Yeah, I I like the floor at the joint because I, there's not a bad place. 
in my opinion. No, 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 yeah, yeah. I and see, the I other see. venues, unfortunately, like Brooklyn Bowl, if you get there too late or it's packed, uh, you're either stuck where you're at because it's too packed or you can't even see the stage, yeah. which I've run into that. And then at, uh, at the Pearl, you know, the, I've had seats at the Pearl in the very back. And I had problems seeing because of the the overhangs. Yeah. So you know, it's just one. It's to each his own. My guess is going to be at the joint. I would just hope those types of things would utilize. I don't understand MGM with their venues that they have. They have that place where they had Rock and Rio. They will not use it. What the fuck? (laughs) It's a good space. I don't get it. Other than the no parking. I mean, they built a giant venue with no parking. We know what you do. This is what you do. Hmm. You have everybody park at the at the empty lot across from the Luxor. Yeah. And you shuttle straight down. Yeah, or you just have the show at the Luxor lot. That's our other place. That's concrete, though. I know, it sucks. We went, you know, that's where Slipknot was. But, yeah, it's, it's weird for all the things we have here. It's just weird. Yeah. But, anyways, uh, getting back to the uh, subject at hand, which is yes. uh, TV and movies. Uh, Venom. Okay, I, I saw a little bit of blurb about this. Yeah. Venom. Uh, now that uh, Spider-Man is kind of becoming a Marvel thing, Okay. They can't really use Spider-Man, so they go, what's the next best thing? Now, I don't know the parameters to that. I, yeah, okay. I, they might not be able to use him for a certain amount of time, or they're gonna that character is going to be in the Marvel Universe for a while. But the, the whole thing is this will be a Venom movie with just Venom, no Spider-Man. Okay. So if you know anything about Venom, he is kind of, isn't he kind of a clone of he Spider-Man? was a uh, symbiote. He was um, an alien symbiote. Yeah, th- I, yeah. I have to do. We'd have to do some research here. We don't have our fact checker to be able to find this out for us. But uh, it, it, it is tied to Spider-Man, no matter what. Yeah. But supposedly he's not in the movie, so it'll be interesting to see if they either do this right or they completely fuck it up. What I'm was really concerned about or worried about was the fact how they um, the Sinister Seven. How they mixed? Shelled. How they? Yeah, I was really looking forward to that. I really was looking forward to that. With Suicide Squad and all that, that's why they nixed that, you know, because it's too much yeah. of the same thing. But uh, Sony hasn't had the best track record when it comes to superhero movies. You know, they just don't quite have that touch. And I worry with something that's going to be heavy CGI, possibly with uh, Venom. Other than Spider Man, what other what other superhero movie have they done? Well, that's what I'm talking about. I mean, I don't think Spider-Man turned out that great. You know, Any compar- of them? Compared to the Marvel side of things, no. Oh, yeah, compared to Marvel, but, absolutely, but, yeah. You know, when you have that many Marvel movies dropping every year, it's going to be hard to throw in a Sony-produced movie that just doesn't match up. Um, on that note, I heard that uh, Gambit got dropped again. It didn't get dropped. It, it got, got pushed back. It got taken off the shelf, yeah. which means could mean that... They, Something else is going to go in there. Yeah. My theory is another the other Deadpool is going to go in there, and I'm thinking that's a good point. That, that they're that with because I wasn't as much as I liked the Deadpool movie. Mm-hmm. And if we go back to episodes when Anna and I spoke about this, um, when they when they did it, it's the the movie itself seemed a little like it was missing something, hmm. and the movie was an hour and a half yeah. long, a little over an hour and a half. And it just seemed like it went by too quick with no, with no substance. So to me, that tells me they're doing it right because they're introing the character to people who are not familiar with the Deadpool sure. character. And th- now that people are familiar with it, they're going to really kick it off with the movie with Cable. Yeah. And by him coming out at the end, have you seen the... No. End? Okay. The but yeah, I already know that. Yeah, so so when, when they see him at the end coming out and announcing, you know, by the way, our next movie is going to have Cable in it. Uh-huh. So to me, they already they already got all that figured out, mapped figured out. out. Yeah, yeah. So actually, that makes good sense that they would take a gambit, you know, push it back somewhere else, and, yeah. then, and you know, again, we don't know if they're going to push it back or put it forward. You know, it could end up being coming out, you know, three months earlier. Yeah. Just when they have these slates all mapped out so far in advance, it scares you when you see a movie get pushed around, especially a movie that you want to see. Yeah. yeah, which I will say, I don't think everybody's super excited about a gambit movie. Um, Anna you know, is. <laughs> well, Anna is, but again, you know, at, yeah. at my job, we were talking about the Gambit movie, and, you know, Taylor Kirsch would have been a good Gambit. I like, he was he was the one that played him in Wolverine Origins. Oh, okay. And he was good right. at that role, and it's kind of like, you know, it's kind of almost like the Flash problem, you know, where, like, you take somebody that everybody's like, oh, I like that guy, and then change it. Just not really for a good reason, other than, yeah, Channing Tatum's 
Tatum is a lot more uh, his bankable. Wife's, his wife's super hot. Well, she's hot, but he's bankable. You know, yeah, yeah. I mean, he's not a, bankable. I'm not, I'm not, not bankable. Talk, I'm not talking bankable. about him. I'm talking about his wife now. Right. She's a super girl. She's a super girl? She's in Supergirl. Oh, she is? Yeah, she's... Jenna Dewan? Yeah, she's uh, she's uh, Lucy uh, Lucy Lane. Oh, okay. Her yeah. cousin? No, her sister. Oh, her sister. Yeah. Oh. Lois's sister. Little sister. Oh, okay. See, if you watch the TV show... I don't. You don't watch, I can't. You don't watch Supergirl. You know, it's, so it's, it's getting good. Lame. It's getting good. Can't... There's times when I'm just like, nope. There's going to be a Flash it. crossover here soon. I'll watch that. And she also made an appearance in The Flash. Yeah, in that little... Uh, yeah, and if you watch Supergirl, you would have seen a reference to the Legion ring that was in The Flash episode when he went to Earth 2. Ah. Just saying, you got to keep up on your shit, dude. Well, you know what? When Supergirl comes out to Netflix or something like that, I will. I promise you it's I will decent, watch it. It's a de- I'm not well, saying it's a fantastic no. show, but it's a good show. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see. But I'll, I'll watch it. when I'll binge watch it. Just for you. All right. Uh, speaking of comic books and movies and things like that, uh, Sandman. Anybody familiar with Neil Gaiman's Sandman series? Uh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt spearheaded uh, the whole thing. He wants to direct it. He wants to write it. He wants it. the whole nine yards. It's his passion project. Pro- project. He left it. Uh, now, are we talking please. about the Sandman comic book or the character Sandman from Spider-Man? The, the comic book. Okay. Yeah. So I was under the impression until right now. I was under the impression you were talking about the character no. Sandman from Spider-Man. I was like, no, everyone oh, forgot oh, that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, even even Thomas Hayden Church <laughs> forgot about that. Uh, anyways, yeah. So, yeah, he left the project. I guess they shuffled it around to New Line Cinema, and uh, something happened there where he wasn't happy with it. He wishes them the best, but he, he left his passion project, which is kind of a bummer. I think, you know, he's a passionate guy. Yeah. He's a talented guy. I think he could have brought something that I don't think a uh, major studio could possibly just take the reins and make but New Line does have a good track record with horror um, so we'll see I mean that's the home I think the original home of Nightmare on Elm Street and yeah. such like that so I mean yeah. they do have the uh, track record to be able to do that so we'll see uh, Max I'm doing all the talking here yeah I, you know you got I got the list and I'm not showing it to you so that's the problem yeah, right yeah. here um, you did mention something earlier and it kind of ruffled my feathers a little bit oh. and uh, and I was like oh remind me to put a little star near next to there, and you were, we were talking about Channing Tatum a little while ago. Yes. So there was a, a couple years ago when they had the uh, email hack from Sony. There was talk of a Men in Black, Twenty One Jump Street crossover, and I was like, ugh, like right off the bat, I was like, ugh, what the <laughs> fuck? Yeah. Because like, I like the Men in Black series. Yeah. You know, even you know, it, it's entertaining. Yeah. You know, I take it for what it is. And I thought 21 Jump Street, and I thought 21 Jump Street was funnier than 22. Same but here. still, 22 was had its own. It was thing. above average. Yeah, it was above average. Yeah. But for them to cross those two series, it's like having your like I love like cheese and olives. Yeah. Cheese and chocolate, but I would never cross the two. You know yeah. what I mean? I I absolutely my makes my skin crawl just knowing that those two series are going to cross over. I could see it happening. It's not like it's like mixing. Like if somebody said, oh, they should bring, you know, God, I'm trying to think of what they said. Something to do with like, oh, they should bring Star Wars into the Marvel Universe. Marvel Universe I would freaking, Star Wars. Yeah, yeah I, I would, would freaking would lose it. boycott yeah. everything related to all that. Any, would you get any of your... Uh, oh, I would get. I would, I would pull Alita Ford and just get a black tattoo over all my <laughs> tattoos. Uh, but is, no. that, is that what that is? Yeah. It was uh, something her husband's name or something like oh, that. Oh, nice! Yeah. She's got the Black Widow tattoo thing yeah, over. Oh, that's yeah. hilarious! But uh, no, nah, it's just uh, you, you, I can see why it worked. They have the same tone to the movies. The uh, the self referential humor of Twenty One Jump Street could work in this. Who knows? It could be funnier than shit. But the idea just sounds really bad on the it outside. It does, man. So I'm sorry that your feathers are all over the place right yeah. now. But uh, like, see, I could see like the whole Jason versus Freddy thing. I get that. I well, understand that. That makes sense. But at the same time, when that first got announced, did people you... were excited. Yeah, I guess so. People were excited that that was coming out. I don't know if I was excited, but I liked the movie. I thought the out, the uh, outcome yeah, was well, actually pretty decent. Yeah, it was all right for the time. Uh, but you know, but uh, going back to uh, movies that are coming out, yeah, I just bought my advance tickets for Superman, t- Batman. No, Ten Cloverfield Lane. Did you really? Yeah, yeah. I can't wait for that movie. Well, uh, 
not to not to take away from the movie. Why do people buy advanced movie tickets? I bought advanced movie tickets now because uh, I brought this up when Star Wars came out. You can reserve your seats at Red Rock, which is a local theater that we have here in Vegas. I think I, a lot of theaters are going that route anyway. Well, they're used to doing it for like one screen. And if the movie's playing on IMAX or 3D, you can do that. I did that because I hate going to movie theaters. So the fact that I can reserve my seats and they're great seats that have nobody behind me because it's in the middle of the theater and it has a rail right where I put my feet up. It's yeah. fantastic. I will spend the extra money to do that. Yeah. So I did that. But uh, I'll let you know in the next episode uh, how that movie turned out. When does it come out? Uh, ne- uh, a week from uh, last Thursday. So the, uh, the so 10th. Com- so it comes out? The 10th of March is okay. the first so screening. So it comes out this coming this yes. Thursday? Yes. Okay. Yeah, so I'll let everybody know how that turned is out. Is it advanced screening or is it just is that well, when it I, is released? They always release movies now on Thursday nights. They put a couple shows out, but it actually comes out Friday. But, you know, I'll go on Thursday. And people still aren't really hip to that, so it's usually not packed. Yeah. So it's kind of nice to be able to do that. So mm, Interesting. Uh, Wayward Pines. Oh, yes. I talked about the show a lot uh, last year yeah. when it was on during the summer. It's coming we both back. did. It was not yeah. all about you, Jamie. Well, I brought it up initially. So you if you want to, if initially. you want to go ahead and look, th- go through every single episode oh and find out God. when I brought it up. Blah blah blah. Since you did it earlier to get me, <laughs> uh, yeah. So Wayward Pines, great show. I liked yeah. it. The ending was a little bit like, hmm, I don't know. I didn't think it was going to be back. Well, it's coming back, yeah. and uh, Jason Patrick is going to be the lead, which okay. he's a great actor. Is he gonna be, now, do you know? Did they mention any kind of details? Like, is it going to be the cop? Is he going to? He's going to be, gonna be a, a doctor of some sort or okay. a scientist that wakes up after. You know, if you watch the show, they were in some sort of uh, suspended animation. You know, that's where yes. they were coming from. Yeah, he's he wakes up. All the characters from the first season will show up in some way or another. Yeah, um, it's going to be interesting, and it's going to serve as a little bit of a prequel and a sequel at the Is same Carla time. Is Carla Gugino going to come back? They did mention her name briefly, so I don't know. I looked her up on Mr. Skin a couple oh, nights ago. Jeez, God, she's yes, she's, she's hot, is. dude. Good yes, God, I forgot how fucking hot she is yeah and i always forget that she was the girl and son-in-law which no, you could have but she doesn't no, no. look like the same girl yeah yeah i, I mean, mean think it back like oh yeah that's her with blonde hair but she has but her with bada bing bada bang wasn't like, there like with wine yeah she's gotten better yeah yeah she and, uh, I, and I didn't yeah. realize uh i don't i didn't remember that she was in sin city she was a parole officer until you looked at Mr. Skin until I and saw at that Mr. she was Skin naked. And she was naked. Yes. Yeah. Well, she was in San Andreas, and I think I'm pretty sure her bo- her booty is what made the uh, fault line. Yeah. Crack. Yeah. It was, she's got. Yeah. She's All right. Like, she's yeah. like a. Uh, like yeah. a I don't want to stare at you when I'm like set, talking about the letter this. S, bro. <laughs> she is. She is. <laughs> Just saying her name. It's like make, it's her name sounds like, like her like, body shape. Like exactly. Like in Spanish. Yeah. Cochino means like you dirty boy. Yeah. She knows what she's doing. Oh, yeah. She knows what the fuck's up. Anyways, take a, take a drink of your drink there, buddy. Um, I, need to, I need to cool down a little bit. Yeah, I got think the engine do. Got the engine a little running a little hot right now. Yikes. Um, so there's there's a, there's a, a movie coming out pretty soon, hopefully, called Meg. And Meg is uh, short for Megalodon, which is like the world's biggest shark ever. It was a prehistoric great Megal- white. Megalodon. Uh, you know, I've heard both. In all honesty, I've heard both. Well, you can Even continue. on I'm science go- shows. I'm, I'm going to look it up. Okay. So the movie's called Meg. It was based on a book by Steve Alton. I have the whole series of these books because I'm a nerd like that. Uh-huh. And I love like Peter Benchley and these, you know, that style, like Jaws and, yeah. and uh, that. The book's amazing, and they're finally going to bring this thing to the big screen. It was supposed to come out years ago, but then Deep Blue Sea came out, so they scrapped it. Eli Roth was going to be the director. I wasn't that really thrilled about that. I like Eli Roth. He's a cool guy. I'd love to meet Eli Roth. I think he's that type of guy. It'd be yeah. cool to hang out with. His movies aren't that great. You know, uh, to be honest with you, Hostel, I thought was really good. Hostel 2, eh. And then he started doing, you know, producing. And his movies haven't been great. Yeah. For that type of movie, I don't think we need an Eli Roth. We need somebody who can handle an uh, epic kind of movie. Yeah. They're getting the guy who did National Treasure, which, believe it or not, those are decent movies. Yeah, those I like Big scale movies. Yeah, movies. Yeah. So I want to see what this turns out to be. But it's odd, though, that he just all of a sudden left the project, I, you mm. know. I'm but sure I'm happy for it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, let me let's ask Google real quick. How do you say it? Oh yes, please. Hold on. According to Google, the correct pronunciation is Megalodon. So you see, fuck Discovery Channel. <laughs> no, you know that was according to YouTube. That, I, believe I believe it. I believe it because I naturally always said Megalodon. 
because it looks like that. And then I watched some stupid thing on Discovery, and some scientists kept saying Megalodon or something oh, like so that. So, that's why so I, I was like, oh, well, he's a scientist, so that guy knows what he's talking about. <laughs> Fuck you, Like Discovery. I had this, I had this uh, argument. We are watching the last episode of The X-Files. Yeah. And um, Scully said... Uh, is it Scully or Sol- Scully? Yeah. I had a brain fart right there. I think it's pronounced Scully. Scully, whatever. <laughs> so, uh, so Scully said, unexplainable. And I got upset. I was like, it's inexplicable. So you know what the wife does? She looks it up. It's two she different goes, things. She goes, unexplainable. No, it's actually the same thing. But my defense was, she is a doctor. Her vocabulary is much larger than ours. She would have said, inexplicable. Her character is a very dominant, headstrong character. She would have said inexplicable, not unexplainable. You do know that she's not really a doctor. I know. But okay, her ca- that's sure. why I said her character. Okay. You did save yourself at the end there because I was a little worried that you were I said her character is a doctor. Land of make-believe. No, no. I'm not like that. <laughs> well. So anyway, but um, where were we at? We were talking about uh, the movie Meg. Okay, Megalodon. And, that's uh, right. Anyways, all I have to say is if it's done right, <laughs> it's going to be terrifying and God... Damn, I hope they do it right. Real quick, do you know, uh, as a little bit of a trivia, do you know what the shark's name in Jaws was? Bruce. Bruce. That's why I love the fact in uh, Finding Nemo, the shark goes, my name's Bruce. Actually, another fun fact. Yes. The name in Mallrats, if you remember the movie Mallrats, okay. Jason Lee pay, played a character in that movie. Yep. What was his name? Do you remember? Yeah, it was, um, uh, well, I'm going to tell you. Brody Bruce. Brody Bruce. Okay. So you have Chief Brody from Chaz, and you have Bruce, which is the shark's name. Oh, really? Yep. And, yeah. And, and, okay, since we're doing this, let's, do it. let's go back to Pixar Please. and The Incredibles. Who voiced Syndrome's, who voiced Syndrome? Jace, uh, Jason Lee. Right. In when, when the little kid gets into the car with Mr. Incredible, he goes, what's his name? Brody. No. Uh, yep. Inside joke yeah. to Little wink, that. little wink at, at mall rats. Yeah. yeah, I mean, if you you know, we could we could do a whole episode on Kevin Smith movies with yeah, all the could. inside jokes because he thinks like we do. Yeah, you know, one day, come on, Kevin, you're listening to this, obviously, so you, you should come on to our. On. Yeah, yeah, you need to come on our show. <laughs> come on now, we'd have a blast. Anyways, um, I was surprised. I brought something up earlier about uh, movie trailers. Uh huh. Brothers Grimsby. I, I s- hadn't heard of this I, movie. I had not. I I saw. Now, a couple of days ago, I did see like something about Brothers Grimsby, and I'm, uh, just, it just kind of was in passing. Yeah. And then I saw on Facebook a post about Sony wanting to delete a scene from there about Donald Trump contracting. We've had this discussion, contracting AIDS. Uh huh. And I'm like, what? And, I, and then it dawned on me. I was like, I've heard of this movie before. I gotta yeah. see it. And then I remember it was it was Sasha Baron Cohen who played Borat and who played Ali G. Bruno and Bruno. I loved I love those movies. Those fucking movies are awesome. <laughs> yep. So I watched the preview for it. It looks hilarious. Yeah. It looks we so we funny. saw the preview uh, before The Witch. Uh huh. And you know my wife is a you know a little bit more finicky when it comes to movies and. She doesn't always like like the slapstick stuff. This yeah. isn't as slapstick as you think it would be. It's yeah. like a, a mixture between like a uh, uh, the Kingsman maybe and Borat. So yeah. it has this kind of weird feel, and it has Mark Strong, who usually he's the one of the brothers, and he usually plays a tough guy in everything he does. And then of course you have Sasha Baron Cohen, who, who doesn't plays? play a tough guy. Yeah. But uh, it has an all star cast. Uh, I you know I wish I could tell you everybody, but I know I saw has Isla Fisher's name Isla in there, Fisher. which she's is every, his wife, yeah, or which girlfriend or whatever it is. Yeah, I watch her read the phone book. Uh, but uh, yeah, it looks really pretty damn good. So. <laughs> Yeah, I was pleasantly surprised. Just the fact where it says that they're talking about deleting a scene. I mean, I, I hope they leave it in there, man. I know. Fuck, leave it in there. Quit being fucking... I just I said mean, something to you about it today. Just yeah. quit being PC about shit. Trump it, or Drump is going to... Trump. Trump is going to sue <laughs> you no matter what. So why not just let it happen? Yeah. So, um, What else you got? I got... Uh, really, one of the last things I want to talk about is the return of Fear of the Walking Dead. Oh, yeah. Uh, we just checked out, both of us, independently in the same space, checked out the, the latest trailer for the uh, new season, season two, which will yep. be a full season instead of the abbreviated six episodes of the first season. So you said how many episodes are going to be? Like Full season, so at least 18, four, probably 14, 16. Something like that. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm kind of on the fence about it. I liked the first series, the initial six-episode series. Yeah. And uh, 
I'm really concerned about zombies in the water. Okay. Oh, well, so are they, obviously. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so uh, there was a, uh, an art, there was an interview that was conducted with the showrunner. I can't remember his name off the top of my head. I think it was Greg Nicotero. Uh, it wasn't Nicotero that gave the interview. It was somebody else. Oh, so anyway, uh, they oh, asked. Oh, it was the, the writer of Walking Dead. I don't know. Okay. As, and they asked him about uh, zombies in the water. Mm-hmm. How is that going to work? He's like, eh. he didn't really give a straight answer. But he goes, zombies don't really swim. They kind of just wade, mm-hmm. which was his response to that question. So I, it better not be shitty. That's all I'm going to say. I don't know. We just saw the trailer, and they showed some zombies in the water. And they showed people. They showed beans in the water. They didn't show if they were zombies or not. No, I, there were some scenes of them walking in the water. But you got to remember, I mean, people forget that zombies we see now yeah. in this episode or these uh, this series aren't the decrepit three-year-old rotting corpses that yeah. we saw in the, these in are the regular fresh Walking bodies. Dead. These are newly appointed zombies, yeah. and so they're going to be a little bit different. I, I like the idea. I don't think, you know, I think the preview we saw, the uh, trailer, is just the first episode of the season. And everyone thinks, oh, the whole thing's going to take place in the water. I don't think it is. No, I don't, because it says it says on like the the tagline is no safe harbor. Right. So to me that tells me they're going to go from harbor to harbor. I mean, it's a lot of coastline in, yeah. in California. There's a lot they can do with that, you know. And yeah. I mean, if you remember the end of uh, the remake of uh, Dawn of the Dead, you know that that, was awesome. that ended in the water. <laughs> yeah. You know that was on the island. Remember? Yeah, yeah. That, and they so did. I mean, you know, they can do it. Yeah. I have faith. Yeah, it's, sure. You just got to remember, it's not The Walking Dead. Yeah, this different show, and a lot of people just want to compare it with The Walking Dead. It's not, you it's, know. Yeah, it's a different. It's a, show, it's a companion show with a whole new cast. Yeah. Uh, speaking of The Walking Dead, if we just want to see right into that quickly, uh, your your bets. Sieg? Who's going did to die? Did you say die? Sieg? Yeah, I think I did, didn't I? Yeah. Yeah. It's segway. No, I, I'm seeking as we as we go. Segway is a little different. I'm seeking into something. S e g u e. See, whatever you spell it, yeah. It's segway. But I can't say I'm segueing into something. No, but you say I'm I seeking. Se- I seek. What's uh, seek into this? I'm gonna look into this, and I'll and I'll Damn post it. I'll post I'll post an updated video to our Facebook page. God damn it! You've been wrong twice today, Jamie. Per you, you have been. I have officially been wrong once, no, oh. and that was on the pronunciation of right. megalodon. Right. The first one, I think you're still grasping at straws from right. that uh, we'll, example. We'll go over it, and I'll show it to you. <laughs> so anyway, just, uh, anyways, <laughs> I want. Uh, so we got like five episodes, six episodes left, I believe, of the uh, this season yes. of Walking Dead. Um, I think it's pretty much safe to say that there's going to be some deaths. I mean, really safe to say, pretty much guaranteed from everything we know. Let's make a dollar bet. A dollar. A dollar bet. A dollar. Who do you think it's going to be? Glenn. You think it's going to be Glenn? I think I, they're going to stick with the script. I think it's going to be. <sighs> Actually, it's... can I? Add to that? Sure. I think it's going to be Glenn and Abraham. Glenn and Abraham? Yep. Okay. I think it's going to be... Okay, so we'll, we'll dollar bet. You get two choices, I get two choices. Okay. And they cannot be the same two choices. So I can't say Glenn and Glenn? <laughs> no. <laughs> I got you, you still win a dollar anyway. <laughs> I think it's going to be... Um, not, you say Glenn. I was going to pick Glenn. But I think it's going to be um, uh, the badass, uh, Daryl. Daryl and probably Michonne. A lot of people are saying that Daryl is... Uh, but Daryl's been on the chopping block for a couple of seasons yeah, already. Yeah, and again, he is the inventive character. Yes. Out of everybody on that show, Daryl is the only one that does not have a comic book uh, counterpart. Yes. So they can do whatever the fuck they want with they that. They can. They can make him be the ending of, yes. you know, of it all. Yeah, I I think they're going to stick with the Glenn thing. Um, and I think Abraham's walking right into it, too, because he's being way too... Ballsy. Well, he's being ballsy and just daydreaming too much about uh, about Sasha. You know, mm. you know he's he's got the 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 feisty the feisty the uh, feisty uh, Mexican girl, but he wants Sasha. Yeah. And uh, yeah, he, I think he's just has love on his mind, and he's gonna get bit in the ass for it, literally. Literally. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So dollar bet. Uh, I got uh, Michonne and Daryl. You got Glenn and Abraham. Abraham. Yeah. All right. Cool. Yeah, so by the end of this season, we'll, we'll find out. Yes. I haven't seen last week's, season, last week's episode yet. You so have not? No, I have not. All right. Well, neither of them died. All right. None I, of them yeah. died. Just so you know. I'm aware of that. I'm, I'm waiting for them to introduce uh, Negan. So, Supposedly the last episode of the season. Yeah, fuck. 
It'd be yeah. cool if they introduced him out of the blue before that. Because like they, they've week? really been pushing it yeah. that they're going to introduce him in the last episode. Uh-huh. It'd be really cool if all of a sudden it's just like, well, there he is. Yeah. You know? So, uh, last song. Let's last get song? to it. Yeah. We're going um, to start. We're going to try to end with songs. Or I think that's a good idea. Yeah. Because, I mean, this is this is about music. I mean, volume 11 yeah. music.com. Yes. It brings this show to you. Yes. So exactly. let's 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 talk about music. Uh, this is a band we talked about earlier called Vampires Everywhere. Yes. And uh, I've had the pleasure of seeing this band a few years back. Yep. And uh, they played like one of the alternative press tours or something like that. And uh, they've grown up a lot. They've changed their sound here and there, but uh, this cool stuff they're doing now. They just came back. Uh, this is a song called Black Betty. Right here on Volume Eleven Music dot com. We'll see y'all next week, maybe. 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 I see your lipstick stains on the dirty sheets. I smell your cheap perfume all over me. But I can't pretend that I want you. That I need you. That I want you around this town. I know you get.